Hello and welcome to the Sandy TV special. Now you may agree or disagree with him, but for over five decades, Arun Shori has been a vital part of India's public conversation as a journalist, a minister, an author. Today, his new book, The Commissioner of Lost Causes, which captures his barnstorming years as an editor of the Indian Express under the mercurial proprietor Ramnath Goenka, has become a time to ask him about those turbulent times and also how the media landscape and the political landscape has dramatically changed from then to now. Arun Shori, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, Commissioner of Lost Causes, I believe this is a term that Ramnath Goenka came up yeah, did. for you. Yes. <laughs> he said, uh, you know, he walked into my head a small cabin in the Indian Express and he opened the door and he said, the office ke bahar ek board lagaunga. The commissioner for lost <laughs> causes. <laughs> because of all the windmills you were tilting against. Yes. But I just wanted to ask you, as I mentioned in my introduction, about how if you look at today's media political landscape, if you look at the shrinking of media freedoms today, the heavy hand of the state, and, and, and much worse, it's easy to romanticize the past, especially of that Arun Shori, Ramnath, Goenka, era of the Indian Express, where you had a fearless proprietor and a fearless editor, uh, you know, taking on the establishment and the establishment occasionally even coming to heel as a result of that journalism. But your book actually brings out the complexities of trying to portray sort of easy binaries. Uh, because even in your time, as you write yourself, that you were sacked from the editorship or from the position in Indian Express at least twice on one occasion because of your politically un inconvenient writings. Uh, it isn't as if those earlier Congress regimes were not hostile to the press, Indira Gandhi, Rajiv Gandhi, uh, and not just during the emergency, but even otherwise. But yet you say in your book that you don't want this to be used as whataboutry, that the, that the sins of the past are used to justify the sins of the present. So in that sense then, how would you make that distinction between what was happening then and, and where we are today? One is the question of scale. Right. Uh, both in the media and in the government. Right. <clears throat> in the media, yes, there must have been at that time persons who just took the PIB handout and just wrote by a special correspondent and <laughs> sent it to Probably. the press. But that was the exception. Today it is the rule. Mm. And uh, similarly in the government's case, yes, there were lies, mm. for instance, on Bofors, on several matters like that. But uh, today it is endemic. Mm. I mean, you have to find it, you have to really search for a truthful statement <laughs> from GDP figures to anything else. Mm. So the matter of scale is very different. I think second difference would be the shame. Mm. This has now become acceptable behavior. At that time, people were quite ashamed if you, uh, you know, uh, call them out or yes, or uh, or. or uh, Uncovered what the truth was. For example, uh, I mean, think if a journalist were, um, it would really transpired that a journalist had been fed stories hmm. by the Ministry of Defence or Home or something, and he had regurgitated them and put it in. And even if he was a very big name, right, <laughs> he would then get to be known as you know, Arey Bhutu Sarkar ki baat keh raha hai, and uh, he would feel uh, out of place in. Uh, uh, among others. Right. But today it will be a badge of honor that you know I have access to yes. <laughs> the Home Minister or somebody. No, no, you're right. There's the, that sense of shame is shame. has and gone. In fact, there's a sense of pride. Pride. Yeah. And there's the same thing in the rulers. Hmm. You know, there are all these uh, theories about why Mrs. Gandhi uh, on the January 18th, 1977 called for elections. Right. And they, uh, one of the current theories, uh, one of the theories that became uh, prevailing uh, prevailing theories was that the IB had misled her deliberately saying that no you will get 350 seats and so on. But uh, I believe that Mr. Piyanthar's account is the correct one. Mm. That no she knew she was going to lose but she had a great unease about what she had had to do and the persons whom she had had to arrest who were known to her father also mm. and there was the uh, the heritage of the freedom struggle and the values for which the rulers at that time, mm. their parents and they themselves had fought mm. and the country had fought. Mm. But today, there is no sense of shame. <laughs> it is accepted behavior. 
Right. So that, there's, that what you're saying is even Indira Gandhi, and it's interesting to to have you say this uh, that because you were you know writing so much against her and and I mean not her personally but against her government and subsequently other Congress governments that the withdrawal of the emergency and the allowing of elections was not just because as you said it could be an IB report it could be because there was external pressure no no, no. it was also because you said you say that you felt. There was some maryada that uh -huh, yes that, that, that I have committed some egregious acts of uh, excess, yes. uh, which has threatened democracy, damaged democracy, but within a certain limit, and also a certain uh, sense of personal obligation <coughs> that I have, you know, put people behind bars who hmm. are really uh, people of the uh, first water in terms of patriotism, hmm. of responsibility, participants in public life. I see them across the aisle in parliament. Hmm. So that sense of shame, of regret, uh, was there. I heard, not only from Mr. P. N. Thar, but I we don't have the time. But I heard this from Mr. J. Krishnamurti himself. Right. Because uh, Mrs. Gandhi had sought a meeting with him at Mrs. Pupul Jayaka's house, right. and what transpired, he told me how uh, remorseful she was. Mm. So these are truthful accounts, and uh, so compared to what you're saying now, where there is no kind of outer limit on. Yes, uh, on Malfi both sides, on right. both on all three sides actually. Right. On the ruler's side, hmm. no restraint at all, hmm. no sense of shame at all. Hmm. On the side of the media, no sense of shame in puffing up those deeds or covering up those deeds. Hmm. And in the side of the people themselves who have now, there is a new normal and they have come to accept all this. If the figures on I mean, as you have shown, as Barkha Dutt showed, as Praveen Jain's photographs in the print showed, that the figures on COVID were misleading. Right. Well, what do you expect the government to do? Hmm. That's the general reaction. So, so you're saying even the public kind of acceptance of this yes. is much more now compared to earlier. Are you yes. saying that earlier, yes. you the, the, uh, the unearthing of all of this would actually create yes. much greater... Yes, yes. Public backlash. I will give you an example. Yes. At that time, uh, you know, during the emergency, uh, immediately afterwards, some of the people from Andhra had contacted Mr. Jayaprakash Narayan hmm. that people, are, youngsters are being killed in the name of encounters. Right. So he had asked Justice Sarkunde, who then constituted a small group. Hmm. Um, uh, the work was done by my good friend Mr. K.G. Kanabiran. Hmm. And we released a report called Encounters Are Murders. Mm. It really created a commotion. Mr. Tarkunde himself was surprised. Mm. Today, you ask your viewers, how many of them can say how many persons have been killed in false encounters in UP in the last one and a half years? Mm. They can't. Mm. They've accepted. Right. Another small report will come, so and so has been killed in an... Yeah, usual fact-finding report or some media investigation no also, just, no no yeah. no no some uh, news report will come so and so killed yes two persons killed we don't go behind it and a good paper like the indian express often collates the firs and the uh, yes. post mortem reports and they turn out to be identical yes Co copy paste yes yeah. and then that creates nothing no consequence Okay, so you're saying, in a sense, all three stakeholders yes. in a democracy, whether the political class, the media, or the public, has you've seen this this big shift. But let me ask you then about those instances uh, where there were examples of, uh, in a sense, the frailties or the problems of that time, and and how it would have been different were it to happen in the present. Because if you just were to look at what happened with you, for example. Uh, the first time that you've lost your job with the Indian Express, this was, correct me if I'm wrong, but shortly after you'd written a series of articles over what was called the Kuo oil yes. scandal in the mid-70s. And this is just to remind our viewers that essentially it had appeared that a government contract had been awarded to a Hong Kong-based company called Kuo Oil, but this was a company with extremely flimsy credentials. It's $50, yes. dollars, 50 dollars paid up capital. It only had $50 dollars paid up capital and yet it got a huge, I think, $200 million, $200 million thing. Dollar and contract. And this company was believed to have links to Sanjay Gandhi. Yes. That was the sort of thrust of it. And it was, I think, a crucial file pertaining to this had got missing. Missing, yes. And that's uh, what? That's what happened was that the... Um, public accounts committee was examining this hmm. and the government would just not let it proceed hmm. and, and then they would ask a question this is sorry but the file is missing hmm. can't get I'll get the file 
next hearing file is not traceable and so on. And uh, through various devices which I have to, uh, the, a, a sequence that I have described, we got the file and we got to know that it had actually been sent and was lying hmm. in the Prime Minister's own house. Right. And had been handed to Mr. R. K. Dhawan. And this was not noted as the movement of files is noted in government and this was not noted but eventually it came out. And the, but this created such a huge commotion that they put enormous pressure on a very big fighter like Mr. Goenka hmm. that it must stop and uh, eventually uh, I, I, the article was stopped on all hmm. sorts of nonsense grounds. Oh, the Public Accounts Committee report has not been released, so how can we uh, let you publish it? Are it is released, you find out. It's really so anyway. the article, again, this is important to, to note, that the article was not allowed to be published in Pub the Express. Yes, it's not in the public. So what did I do? That night, I mean, this went on for quite some time. They said, no, no, no. If you give out, give out the details from the file, which has been denied to parliament, it will be a breach of privilege of parliament. Are I am assisting parliament. In any <laughs> case, if anybody files a breach of privilege motion against us, we will be in control of what happens after that. Anyhow. Uh, so, you basically then, then made copies of the whole yes, article I, uh, and you night at three cyclo style. A cyclo style. In those days, we didn't have fax machines, so it was cut on stencil. And then you distributed cycle, it to 75 MPs, starting with Mrs. Gandhi. Right. <laughs> and naturally, when the opposition people, the parliament convened mm. the next day, there was great halla, and the paper was in a quandary, Varghese was in a quandary. Should we report the halla, but we can't report why it is there? <laughs> <laughs> this is George Vergis, who I think he was the editor at that time. At that time, yes. And this is actually kind of interesting because almost like a parallel today would be journalists who are stifled from getting their stories published in their newspapers or TV channels then take to Twitter yes. and put the information out there yes. and that kind of creates a pressure. Uh, but I think and that's a very important thing to do. Do not let uh, uh, anybody uh, pressurize you for, by, to suppress the facts. If, if today for good reasons. Hmm. The main uh, media for which you are working cannot publish it, doesn't matter. You find the alternate route. routes. But the thing is that it did come with consequences for you. Yes. That, that as you said, there was an enormous amount of pressure brought on Ramnath Goenka. Yes. And he had to let you go. Now, that, that, that was my going back to my initial question that how do you reconcile that with this sort of image of Ramnath Goenka as someone who is a fighter, no, no, who is a crusader? But he was But a he great caved fighter. and had to, he had no, to sack but, you. But you see, uh, Ramnanji used to have a Sanskrit proverb for doing everything, <laughs> for standing firm and for bending, okay. so as to fight later on. Okay. So <laughs> at that time, he had survived, I mean he had barely survived uh, the emergency. Mm. He was under enormous strain, his own health had broken down. Mm. So well, he has to sacrifice somebody, he has to sacrifice it to live another day, to fight another day. Right. So, I do not hold it that much against him and I do not regard that single dismissal hmm. or my dismissal as, um, as a great, um, uh, as a great as a proof of the fact that he was not a great fighter. No, he oh, was a great fighter. Okay, you do not see it like no, that? No, no, no. And, he, and, he and you went, believe? And he called me back because the circulation of the paper fell and all sorts of things happened and right. he called me back. Okay. And, and you believe that even when he did it, he did it unhappily. It wasn't something. No, that I got no. That uh, by that time, other things had also come in. One okay, was pressure okay. of the government, and the second was the people was you know uh, were preying on what was the crucial thing with him. For in his mind, he was the paper. Oh, okay. And right. He, now the paper was getting identified with this fellow and his. I don't show So <laughs> then. <laughs> So that was another factor. <laughs> the other thing I wanted to ask you as a contrast was again talking about the idea of, of a media today which is heavily politically compromised and the idea that journalists uh, are essentially guardians of a certain kind of public trust and that they need to keep a distance from power was the fact that again and this comes out in your, in your book so vividly is that there was not that kind of distance as well. I mean in the sense that whether it was Ramnaji or you, you were quite closely involved in, in the JP movement. Uh, you were drafting press releases for JP, Ramnath Goenka was actively involved in trying to build a coalition to, to even unsettle Rajiv Gandhi where Zail Singh was also involved. Um, again, how would, you, how would you reconcile that with the idea of a more independent press compared to no, today? No, but you see, you have to see, I mean, if you are working against the emergency and hmm. you think that that is the same thing as working, getting close to a minister 
in the in the economic department so that you can then get to have some influence with the companies it's very different right and similarly ramna ji uh, so you're saying that when you were your involved involvement with let's say the jp movement and all yes. of that was then, to do with the with the circumstances that those were no, you know also the those, issue, those the, issue, the issue is the freedom of the uh, f- freedom in the country hmm. now if every journalist thinks that he is today working for the freedom of the country i can't quarrel with that <laughs> but the readers will know right and so there's a qualitative difference between working against the emergency and today um, being a stenographer to a minister right. or a government or a company okay a great difference of being close to and also to yes. be close to jp and to be close to <laughs> <laughs> very different but but about Okay, so the emergency, I agree, is a, was an unusual time, yes. and it's a time when you perhaps have to redefine what those Lakshman Rekhas are. But if you look at that entire incident, where uh, and and this is such a fascinating chapter in your book, where again I'm paraphrasing here, that Zail Singh, who was the president, yes. Rajiv Gandhi was the prime minister. Zail Singh felt increasingly that he was being isolated, and he might even be kind of dislodged from Rashtrapati Bhavan. So he actually made an attempt to sack Rajiv Gandhi. and it appears that ramnath ji was quite closely involved with that even okay. to the extent of drafting the letter yes mr mulgaonkar drafting the letter mr mulgaonkar yes. who was the editor of the uh, no he was by that time not the editor right. but he was the are you the hangman in merit then ramnath ji <laughs> wanted to fire an editor he said mulgaonkar he would ask <laughs> how to okay. do it <laughs> so uh, So, so yes. what happened there, and and how would you again? See, in Ramnath's case, yeah. uh, you cannot do things separations. I see. He was uh, public affairs, and were his passion. And the paper was an instrument for public affairs. And when he, when he whether he was possessive about a government or when he turned against a government, hmm. it was certainly involvement in politics. right in that sense so he okay. saw not he saw nothing wrong with the fact that he was actively involved with trying to essentially get a prime minister yes, sacked yes 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 and the and the only arguments i was able to succeed with him were that they, it was tactically wrong <laughs> not in principle not morally <laughs> not morally <laughs> wrong but he wouldn't care for the moral argument so it was just that it was the wrong thing to do and in fact you then were actually sent to rashtrapati bhavan to head off that letter from being sent Yeah, yeah, well, at least to tell, um, you see, uh, actually, my good friend Karan Thapar has given a twist to this that I think that I uh, uh, stopped the uh, dismissal of Rajiv Gandhi. Nothing like that at all. But I certainly were uh, was able to persuade Gandhi ji that uh, that letter should uh, that no such thing should be done. Hmm. Um, that was uh, I was must have been one of the many persons who were counselling him. This I mentioned that Mr. Advani met him when he heard of this. Advani met uh, Gyani Zail Singh uh, the well. next day when he heard that this had happened because uh, this uh, Rajmata was closely associated with the BJP and she had was the emissary oh i see Rajmata Sindhya yes was was the one who actually took the letter and the thing that the express will stand with you please do it so that is what i went to counter after persuading Ramna ji and Mulgaonkar that this was terrible and when advani ji heard that yes she had gone hmm. he rang up the lochan singh that i must meet the president immediately right and he went and disabused the president that, no 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 we are not with this so there were several letter. people who were trying to yes. persuade so their things from was, backing off so including think, yeah. uh, so i my role would have been to persuade him that please don't pay any attention to this letter that draft that has been sent to you and do not count on the uh, the support of the express right. i have come to disabuse you of that notion okay. only that limited point but okay. it was an important point okay but again just to quickly ask you in conclusion then how would you distinguish that kind of lack of boundaries that you felt ramnath ji had at that time with today's uh, you know again what's the right word to use like when you again look at today's media proprietors several of whom completely have aligned themselves with the government of the day or they don't see that kind of boundary how would a ramnath ji have been different from no. what we today call godi media yes I think there are several differences. One, Ramna ji believed only in temporary marriages, muta marriages in in Islam. That uh, <laughs> no person with whom he may have today associated and yes. said, "Okay, we'll do this project together." Yes. Uh, in in fighting somebody else right. uh, in public affairs, right. could count on his support for long. 
Okay. He was not an instrument of that person. That fellow was an instrument of Ramnaji at that time. Oh, I see. Okay. And then so, Ramnaji would turn. Would slip. The, the first people to write against Mr. Muraji Desai, after all, that was the government that was born out of the emergency, hmm. and, uh, and Ramnaji had played a very active part on who will become the prime minister and who will not become the prime minister. Uh, he may have succeeded. He may have wanted Jagjivan Ram or so on, but he was an active participant in those discussions. Right. But the first paper to write against them, but the time to go, it was Mulgaonkar's editorial on Mr. Muraji Desai. Right. And, and that certainly convinced everybody that if Goenka has written this, Muraji has number to get. Come back to The last point I wanted to ask you again about the then and the now, and again about the idea of the journalist keeping a distance and, and being that custodian of public trust, was about actually then the joining of politics, which happened with you. And this is actually something that you come tantalizingly towards the end of your book. And your book ends with a call that you get from the BJP, the then President Khushabhav Thakre, who said, do you want to join? And you say yes. And then you say that you want to address that in another, that's the subject of another <laughs> book. Uh, but again, how do you, how do you reconcile that with, with the idea of, of crossing that Lakshman Rekha. No, I think also the, uh, the issue really there would be to look at the record of the person. There is no, there are no Rekhas that are drawn. Hmm. The, uh, supposing I was not independent after I joined politics. Right. Then that would be a compromise. Hmm. But if I stuck to what I thought was right hmm. and I, if I behaved honorably and if I, for instance, I was then working for Mr. Bajpayee, hmm. if I, uh, if you heard Hmm. or if there was evidence that I misled him or I tried to paper over what he was saying or doing, it will be some, uh, it will be then I have compromised. Right. But if I have continued to remain independent hmm. and that is the test, not the fact that I was unemployed and therefore somebody says, okay, why don't you join? Say, okay, no problem. Right. But I will continue to be what I was. So even if as a journalist you well, are… It is just a platform. Okay. It is a platform for doing some work here. You continue to do the same work in a different capacity, in a different pla on a different platform, which is offered to you or comes your way. Okay. That is the test. Okay. Not the fact that, see, supposing some, uh, somebody, some journalist uses the newspaper or his, uh, uh, his uh, task at that time to try to get in the good books and then is rewarded with something and then continues to do the same, he be the megaphone of the government from inside, hmm. well, that's very different. Okay. And uh, the test would be public perception. Right. So, in your case, by then you were, out, uh, in a sense, out of a job. Yes, absolutely. And there was nothing as such going on. Right. When this offer came. Yes. But was there any hesitation or doubt you felt at all that given the fact that you had this track record as a journalist taking on the establishment, that you would, in a sense, be uh, be a Join part of the establishment, huh. well, but I don't think, you see, no journalist looked upon me when I was in the Indian Express as a journalist. <laughs> right. When I was in politics, uh, politics means when I was in government, nobody looked upon me as a politician. <laughs> right. So, that's a so good So, in a sense, that, sense. that ba the boundary was never clearly, I mean, those, those categories were never strictly yes, applied. That was, that was, uh, I think we were about, if I may say so, about me and that he protected that. Right. He, he okay, saw he, that you were… Okay, usko karne to jo karna ho, theek karega. Achha, theek. That was Ramnaji's view also at that time, till he turned. <laughs> till he turned. Okay. He, you see, he would tire of people. Right. He would… Uh, uh, Varghis. Mujhe kehte hai, ki bilkul padri hai. Subay, aath baje aata hai, raat ko saadhe aath baje jata hai, aur isko paise bhi nahi chahiye. And six months later, he tells me, Are ye padri meri uh, ye uh, Shivji ki barat ko chalaega. <laughs> so one. <laughs> so, he was too proper for <laughs> the Shivji and barat of Ramnath going. Ka. Fascinating. Anyway, this is at least the first, first, first leg of the journey and we'll wait to hear of the second chapter. But always a pleasure to talk to you, Arun Shori. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.